In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the transfer case shift motor on this Ford F-150. Let's get started. Let's disconnect the electrical connector. It's got a tab up on top. If you squeeze that, you should be able to pull the harness side off. A lot of times it'll be full of sand, so it'll be difficult to take out of there. If it does have a lot of sand buildup, make sure you get that out of there. And check for corrosion. Always, these uh, corrode a lot of times. They're out in the open here. Next, we'll have to get this harness off of its retainer. You can use a trim tool to do that. Just pop it up and off. Okay, once you get this out, we actually have to depin this wire over here, the blue one. So on the inside of the connector, take out this red piece. On the back side of the connector where you see all those wires going in, pop off this cap, use a little pocket screwdriver and just pry it out. And uh, this will give us access to the back side of the pin here. You want to slide this back on the harness just like this. There's a silicone or rubber gasket here. Pry this out as well. We need the wire to come out through the back side, which is why we're doing this. Peel this out. Try not to damage the wires with whatever tool you're using. Peel this back enough to make room to actually get a pick in here and uh, pull this wire out. Now with a pair of needle nose pliers, pull out the red insert here. That's going to allow you to squeeze or to pry the little locking tabs for the pin out. And by doing that, you can unlock the wire. To pry these apart, you use a pick or anything else that you might have that'll get in there. And you just want to push it up like that but at the same time pull the wire out. So I'm gonna have to turn it. You won't see the front side of the harness, but there you go. Once you pry that out, you should be able to pull the wire with the end terminal straight out. And now we'll have to just take it out of this rubber slash silicone grommet and the back side of the harness. And there it is, unwrap it from the rest of it. This will stay with the vehicle. We'll plug this into the new connector and this will come off with the motor. Now there are four 10 millimeter bolts that we need to remove. There's one on this bracket. The new transfer case motor will come with a bracket so I'm not gonna unbolt it from the bracket. And then three right around the gear of the motor. They're all 10 millimeter in size so take them all out. go set those aside now you want to take the motor make sure the harness comes with it give it a little wiggle there we go break it free a lot of times it'll be corroded in here pull it right off and there it is on the old transfer case motor there was no gasket on here but there was some RTV as you can see so I'm gonna put some on the new one a very thin layer just so it can seal up around where the shaft of the motor mounts on and uh, this, is, this is a lot, this is way too much. I just want a very thin layer, so I'm gonna spread it with my glove. That way it makes a nice watertight seal. And if you don't do this, most likely what's gonna happen is corrosion will build up there, seize up this shaft, and if you ever have to remove it, and actually moisture might even get inside the motor at that point, well, you'll have some issues. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. A very thin layer all around will do the job. So at this point, one thing you wanna pay attention to is how the shaft is clocked. This one is very similar, if not spot on, so we're good to put it in. If this one is turned in a completely different direction, what you're gonna wanna do is plug the transfer case motor in on the harness and activate the switch from inside. Go to four wheel drive and go back to two wheel drive, most likely it's uh, in the wrong position and it'll self position itself once you go back to two wheel drive. If you have corrosion built up here or some remaining gasket material, just scrape it off with a razor blade, make sure it's nice and flat. Mine's very clean, so we're good to install. Get the new motor, line it up. If it doesn't go in right away, try to move it around till it lines up. As you can see right there, it lines up. Turn it, have one bolt ready. 
doesn't matter which one it is, but once it lines up, start it and make sure it threads on smoothly. I'm going to bottom this one out. That way it holds the motor in here. Now I'll put the other three in. And this one at the end here on the bracket. Okay, snug these up. The torque for all four of these is 89 inch pounds. That converts to 7.4 foot pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench that goes that low, just give them about an eighth of a turn after they bottom out. harder to reach on this new one so I can't fit my socket in there so I'm just going to take a wrench and make it nice and snug. That's tight. Right here where you see that little uh, plastic or rubber grommet sticking out that's where we'll have to insert the blue wire so we can repin it into the connector. So let's do the same thing pop off the back try not to break it go. Slide that back. Pull this piece out. Now take this blue wire, slide it through the cap on the back, and then it doesn't matter how it's twisted. As you can see it has this round ring all around. That's what's going to lock it in. So slide it through the hole. Pull enough wire through. Press it through, try to find the slot that it goes in. There we go, that just seated in. Keep pressing it. Once you have it most of the way in, as you can see, most likely you won't be able to lock in until you pull this insert out. Push the blue wire in. There we go, I just heard it click. And now we'll have to lock these in. Put this locking insert back in here just like that and now if you tug on it it should be good and locked in there. At this point make sure the silicone gasket is still tightly positioned on there and then slide this cap back on. Make sure no wires are getting jammed in there and pinched like that. Pull them through the back side if you have to. Press this cap on it should click. There we go that's locked in. This holds that silicone gasket tightly in place so that it doesn't let any water through. Now let's resecure this harness with its retainer. Make sure you don't pull too much on these wires. It does fit the right way, so make sure it's facing up. Clip it in all the way down. Now this red piece that we pulled out of the connector on the motor side at first, it's actually supposed to stay on the truck harness side. So press that back in. And now just reconnect the two harnesses. Make sure they click. And what we have to do now is secure the blue wire. I'm going to take a wire tie and loop it around here. Just tie it to these other wires. You don't want this to be free floating here because if you go off-roading or go over something that'll catch it, you know, it's going to rip it out and you'll have issues. So make that nice and snug. Cut off the excess. And there you have it. Now you would test it out. And that's installed, but there's one more thing that we have to pay attention to, and that is the adjustment and the, the clocking, basically, of the motor itself or of the shaft that goes in there. Look at the old one and make sure that the positioning of these screws or the cap that goes around these screws looks the same as the new one. This one is very, very close, so I'm going to leave it the way it is and we'll test it out. If you test it and you have trouble getting it into four wheel drive, almost like it's not engaging enough or getting it out of four wheel drive back into two and um, you feel that it's stuck in four wheel drive partially, most likely it'll be these screws. They need to be adjusted, clock the motor properly in either direction, whatever you need to do until you can get it in and out of four wheel drive smoothly. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. 
TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.